Okay. In this station, we will discuss the arteries of the posterior abdomen. Firstly, this is the abdominal cavity. Okay, this is the abdominal cavity. This is the upper part of the abdomen. This is the left side of the body, and this is the right side of the body. Okay. Then, we would like to reflect this part of the, of the lobes of the intestine to the right in order to visualize the central vascular structures. Okay, this is the pancreas. We cut it here in the neck of the pancreas in order to visualize the posterior structure. They reflect it laterally. Okay, then you can see clearly these two longitudinal vascular structures. On the left side, we have the abdominal aorta, which is its branches, and on its right side, it is the inferior vein cave. Okay, regarding the abdominal aorta, it comes from the thoracic region to the abdominal region behind this structure. This is called the median arcuate ligament. Okay, this median arcuate ligament lies at level of T12 vertebrae, and after it enters behind this arcuate ligament, it passes downward and slightly to the left of the lumbar vertebrae. Okay. Then the shape is marking from outside, when we would like to describe the shape is marking, then of the abdominal aorta is from a point that lies 2.5 cm above the transpyloric plane and up to the 1 or 2 cm below and to the left of the normal side and the right. Okay, this is the shape is marking of the artery. Then opposite to T4 here, it divides into these two terminal branches, which is the common area arteries. Okay, in order to describe the aorta and its branches, it can be described in, in three categories. There is some branches that comes from the front of the aorta, and it is a single branches which supplies the gut tube and its derivatives. There is some pair branches that comes from the sides or even posterior of the aorta and it supplies the viscera. Okay. There is also some branches that emerge from the aorta and supply the abdominal, the abdominal wall and the diaphragm. Okay. The highest branch or the first branch of the abdominal aorta is called the inferior phrenic artery. It lies at the upper border of the heat wall. Here, in this cadaver, this is the inferior phrenic artery. It lies a little bit lower than the ciliate axis. Okay? And this is called a normal variation. It is still lies at the level of the, of the heat wall. But normally, it is the highest or it originates higher than the ciliate axis. This is called the inferior phrenic artery. It passes upward towards the diaphragm where it diverges to supply the undersurface of the diaphragm. From there, it gives a small branch, it's called the superior suprarenal artery. Okay? Then the second branch that lies at the limit of the lower border of T12 is this one. It's called the ciliate, the ciliate branch or sometimes it's called the ciliate axis. This ciliate trunk has a number of three arteries, three major branches. This large one passes towards the left side, it's called the splenic artery, okay? The second one passes towards the right side here, it's called the common hepatic artery, and the third one passes towards the stomach, the little curvature of the stomach, this one, it's called the left gastric heart. Okay. It lies at the level of T12, as I said. And actually, it is the artery or the main artery that supplies the forder and its derivatives. And when we say the forder, it is the gut tube that starts from the mouth up to the 
Sie haben Bart und wir gehen in den Nebel, dann belogen. An den Nebel ist, also, der Liebe, dann gehen wir erst ein Spiel. Okay? Then we go down, slightly down, to see this, this branch. It is a bad branch. When I say bad, it is a right and left branch. Okay, this is the left one of them. It is called the middle subrarinal artery. This middle subrarinal artery emerges from the lateral side of the abdominal aorta, approximately at the level of L1. Okay, and it goes laterally to supply the subrarinal, subrarinal gala, or the adrenal gala. A little bit down, downward, opposite to L1 also, we have this opening. This opening is for the superior mesenteric artery. It lies at the level of L1. Okay? Actually, here it is cutting due to the effect of here and here. Here is the superior mesenteric artery. Okay? As you can see. Actually, the superior mesenteric artery it is the artery of the middle. And when we say the end up, it is the area from the second part of the duodenum, namely the area of the angular of the up to the junction between the median two cell or the right two cell and the latter or the left one cell of the transverse column. It supplies all these structures. Okay? When we would like to describe the branches of the severe mesenteric artery, we can say it has some branches that emerges from its left side and other branches emerges from its right side. The branches that emerges from its left side, the first one it is called the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. This one. The other branches that emerges from its left side it is this artery, as you can see clearly here, it is called the inner and inner. Arteries. Okay. From its right side, we have this branch higher up, it's called the middle colic artery, to supply the transverse column. And this is a common trunk that gives an origin to the two arteries that supply the ascending column. This one is called the iliocolic, and this one it is the right colic. Okay. And as you can see here, this is the colic and this is the cecum. Okay. It is a, a little bit numerous like this. This is the right colic and this is the iliocolic artery. And the iliocolic gives the branches that are the artery to the adults. Okay. This is the superior mesenteric artery. Then we go downward, further downward, to see this branch. Okay, on each side. On the right side, because the inferior vein cava is present, we cannot visualize the structure of that lies behind. But we can see it here clearly on the left side. This is the renal artery. This is the left renal artery. It emerges from the lateral aspect of the abdominal aorta at level of E2. Okay, with the left one at the level of L2, sorry. At the level of L2, the second lumbar vertebra, and the left one, as it is uh, closer to the midline, okay, or closer to the it is shorter than the right one, okay. Then we have a little bit downward this branch, okay. This is called the guanadal artery. In male, it is a testicular artery. And in female, it is the ovarian artery. It emerges from the anterior lateral aspect of the abdominal aorta in any anywhere between the, the renal arteries and the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery. Anywhere between L2 and L3. Okay? It passes laterally in front of the anterior venicular on the right side and in front of the solus media and passes up to the uh, pelvic ring where it crosses 
or in the middle it crosses the ureter, not supply the ureter and passes down more. In male it enters the deep inguinal ring to become one of the content of the inguinal canal. In female it goes uh, to enter the suspensory ligament or to enter uh, to supply the, uh, the ovaries. Okay. Then we will go down more to see this, this artery. Okay. This is the inferior mesenteric artery. It originates from the front of the abdominal aorta at the level of L3 and passes downward to supply the depth of the hind leg. Mainly, it gives these branches. This one is called the left colic. Okay. And these series of artery, it's called the sigmoidal artery, or the sigmoidal arteries, three or four. And this one, regarded as a continuation of the anterior mesenteric artery, is called the superior rectal artery, to supply the upper part of the Okay. Then, opposite to the L4, we have these two light terminal arteries. This one is called the left common iliac artery, and this one is the right common iliac artery. The right is more longer than the left. Now, let us see the branches that emerge from behind the abdominal wall. We have a number of branches that are made behind. As you can see here, as this is the superior mesenteric, this is the level of L1. Opposite the L1, we have the face lumbar artery, this is the second one, this is the third one, and this is the fourth one. We have a number of four lumbar, lumbar arteries, and it is paired on each side. We have also this small. We have also this small artery, it's called the median sacral artery. It emerges from the posterior part of the abdominal aorta. This one is the median sacral. It emerges from the posterior part of the abdominal aorta and passes downward, crosses the sacral promontory to supply the supply the rectum. Okay? Then, by this we cover all the abdominal aorta and its branches in the posterior abdominal. Aorta.